so we all understand that there's not enough information when it comes to midwives relocating to UK. And there's always this argument that finding a job is very difficult for midwives. Today, I have a midwife who has been through the process and she's going to tell us exactly how she did it, how long it took. Hi, two weeks, or I think between two weeks to a month, after I met her, luckily for me, I got an interview after 45 applications. Hello yeah. and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bridget, a UK registered nurse. I dedicated this channel to helping you on your relocation and immigration journey. But I am not an immigration officer or consultant, neither am I an employer. So everything I talk about is based on research and experience, all right? Everyone, this is Gifty, the midwife I'm, I talked about, that she's going to tell us everything about the midwifery process. Hello, Gifty, and welcome to our channel. In fact, we are happy to see you. So, sweetheart, tell us about yourself. Hi, Bridget. Um, thank you very much for inviting me on your channel. Um, I'm very delighted to be on here. So I'm Gifty, a midwife in UK. I arrived like a few months ago. Kind courtesy to you, of course. Thank you very much for that. So um, the experience has been okay so far. Okay, great. So what were you doing before you arrived in UK? So I, I had finished my service and I was just applying for a job. I think I went for my IL tuition and then I wrote the exams. Then I went on to do the CBT and then I started applying for jobs. Right. But were you working back in Ghana? Yeah. So I got frustrated at a point because it was my intention to just move here after service but it was it, it looked like it was not possible like moving here was not possible for me so i just decided to look for a job whilst i do this alongside uh gifty has already made it clear that the job search was frustrating that's interesting <laughs> to note okay so uh so during nmc registration on the uk website how did you go about your registration how do you register as a midwife to differentiate from adults nurse? Okay, so first of all, I registered with the NMC UK online and then they had to verify from NMC Ghana that indeed I'm a midwife in Ghana. So um, I went, I made some payments at I think ADB Bank because I, I had a degree in midwifery. I didn't need to do any clearance from the Ministry of Health. So I just went ahead to pay the money at the ADB Bank and then I sent the receipt from the payment to NMC um, head office and then they also did some processing there. NMC UK sent them an email so they I think they just moved on with the process from there. Okay, that's true. So I have a video on uh, the documents involved in this whole process as well in my channel. So please watch it if you haven't watched it all right is there a special option like a midwifery option for you to select from when you are doing the online registration so you know they have i think they have adult nursing um neonatal nursing or something and they have yeah. mental and midwifery so i think it's four so i selected the midwifery option and then they told me they will send a mail to nmc ghana to verify that i'm a midwife great okay so there's an available option for you to choose whether you want to register as a midwife whether you want to register as a mental health nurse but I want to register as an adult nurse. Now, just tell us a little bit about CBT. How was your CBT exam? Is it the same as the adult nursing or is it any different? Okay, so the only similarity is um, about the numeracy part. The drug calculation, I think, is the same as the um, adult CBT, adult nursing CBT. But for the part two, it's more of midwifery, more of the NMC code, midwifery scenarios, safeguarding, like everything about UK midwifery. Oh, great. Okay. So which I else did you write? IELTS UKVI academic. Yeah. Okay, why UKVI academic? So um where I registered for my class, I consulted my lecturer and he was like, I'm supposed to write the UKVI. And the academic is also good because if I want to further my education, um, I can use the academic for both education and work purposes. But if I am to write the general, I can't use that to work in U um, for academics in UK. I can only use it for, to work. So that's why I chose the UKVI. Right. So uh, a little information there for those who do not know. IELTS academic standard is also accepted by NMC UK. But the difference is those who are not able to meet the band score and want to take the nursing assistance opportunity you need the ukvi so if you are a nurse or a midwife and you take the ukvi and you don't meet the band score you can actually apply for care assistance roles and you may be lucky to get one to move so that's why a lot of people are now registering for ukvi but we all know it's it's quite expensive than the other one the standard one but you definitely need academics so it has to be standard academic or ukvi academic 
So, Gipsy, just give us a general overview of the documents you used in your application. Okay, so for the NMC UK online registration, they asked for my um, school certificate, registration certificate for um, NMC Ghana, passports, yeah. And then a police clearance, sorry. And then they'll also ask for um, health declaration from your um, your health personnel, like um, your health practitioner, like a doctor or your personal doctor, family doctor, someone to verify that indeed you are fit to work. So I think those were the things they asked for. You right. know? And then you also need your IELTS test report. You need to upload it. Yeah. 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 And then if you also have a change in name, because maybe you are married or something of that sort, you need a document proving the change in name. Now let's also talk <laughs> about job search and arrival okay so before i talk about that i just want to tell my other colleagues who are also searching for jobs over here that it's very difficult i'm not going to lie about that it's very very difficult and it can be frustrating at times but if you know what you really want i think you should just go for it and you need to be patient enough because um i started my application somewhere in july i think my first application was 16 july and before i started applying for the jobs I was watching YouTube videos and people were saying they had, like they did about 210 applications before they had an interview, you know, like most of them had done over 100 um, job applications before they had a chance for interviews. So I was in for that. So um, I started applying for jobs. I looked for how to write my supporting statements because you need a supporting statement for the job application. And I used um, NHS jobs and then track jobs um, site. I also used LinkedIn, but I wasn't so active on LinkedIn. So I, I, it was basically the track jobs and then the NHS jobs. And it looked like I was I was really doing nothing until I met um, Bridget because she actually helped me to save my documents the right way to change my CV. Because I think my CV was like three pages. But she helped me to cut it short and she helped me with a job such as well. Because I was I was just looking for band six, band six, like anything with review, I'll just apply for it. And I didn't know like I really had to look for like a, a particular band. I just thought I just had to apply for like if it's midwifery, then I qualify for it. So I think she was meeting her was an eye opener because I got to know the exact things to apply for and how to structure my supporting statements to catch the recruitment team to shortlist me for an interview. So and two weeks or I think between two weeks to a month. After I met her, luckily for me, I got an interview after 45 applications. Yeah. That's great. Oh, I, anyway, I'm glad I was able to help. But well, it, you did. Good. We actually met under weird circumstances. <laughs> it was a referral from a friend, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's it. Um, Before you start or before you put in applications and start getting frustrated, get the right information. Like do your research, know how to put your things together, like know how to structure your application forms. And I have a video on job application tip, but because I streamlined it more to nurses, other uh, people are not watching it. And I also have a CV format for teachers on my channel as well. And the nurses are not watching it. The midwives are not watching it because I mentioned teachers. But I mean, it's more of understanding the concepts and the things to put in there rather than doing the exact same thing. Because even the teachers, I'm not expecting them to do the exact same thing. They should just revamp it. Like, look at what I have written and use it to develop yours. I'm swelling headed in a way. Okay. So in, to in all, how long did it take you from the time you started your preparation till arrival to UK? If I'm not wrong, like four months or five months. Because like I mentioned, I started in July and I was called for an interview in September. So my interview was on 30th September. Yeah, after 45 applications. Congratulations, well done. Just for my colleagues to know, like every part of this journey is so um difficult. Like it's so it's like a daunting task because you move from one obstacle to the other. Like IELTS is not easy to do. Then you move to CBT. Then now interview to so you would have to go and look for questions, like practice. And with the help of Bridget, I was able to like she took me through the interview process because it was my first ever interview. I didn't interview for um, my midwifery degree, so like it was my first 
first interview after my midwifery um, degree. So, you know, I was having cold feet and all, but she took me through. She helped me to, you know, know how to answer the questions, how to strategize my answers and all that. So she she has been really helpful to my journey or my, my coming here to the UK. And I'm so grateful. Bridget, God bless you. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not taking the credit entirely because, well, um, I don't know it all. But I think I think it was God's time. All right. So, Gifty, thank you so much for the insight. So, those of you who are not watching my videos, please watch my videos, okay? All right. Watch my videos and then try to learn a lot from what I say. Now, tell us, how is the midwifery remuneration? I mean, the salary. How is it? Is it, is it worth going through all the stress, you think? It is. It is because one of the things that really pushed me to come here was the money. And I don't regret coming here because I think the money is it's quite good. Even now that I'm taking a band four salary, it's even better. It's good. So I, I think the money is good, yeah. Okay. So you are working at the lower band now and then later yeah. move to because higher. I don't have my pin, so I'm working as a band four for now. So when I get my pin, I'll be upgraded to band five. Okay, all right. So uh, what about the OSCE experience? I know you are done with OSCE. How was this? How was the training? How was the exam? What are some of the things people out there should expect to be asked to do during their OSCE? Okay, so luckily for me, my trust trained me for the OSCE. So since I arrived here, I was just training for the OSCE for like a month or two before I went for the main practicals. And it involves 10 stations. So the normal API, which is the same as the nurses, so assessment, planning, implementation, and then evaluation. So for the assessment, you'll be asked to um, assess a pregnant woman like at the antenatal stage. So from head to toe, you check her vitals, you do an abdominal palpation, you know, all that. And then you assess her on a male's chat. We have something called a male's chat, like the... CPL chart we use in Ghana, but it's slightly different here. So you assess on that and then you give a differential diagnosis, like just basically it. Then with the same woman, you are going to plan her care. That's the planning. And then the implementation, you are going to administer medications that has been prescribed for her. And then the evaluation is when everything has settled, like the pain or whatever she came in with has settled and you have to transfer her to the community for continuity of care. So mm -hmm. that's just for the API. And then you'd have to do two emergency stations so it's eight minutes for each so it can either be postnatal like you know all those obstetric emergencies we have like postpartum hemorrhage shoulder dystocia or um, sepsis you know those obs um, obstetric emergencies but according to uk guidelines so that's why that that's what the training is for so you know how it's done over here over the, yeah there's a criteria that they used to mark and then you do a link something called a link station you deliver a woman and then you assess her baby or you oh. do a postal check and then you assess the baby so that's I don't, I, maybe because I've not searched, but I don't think I've found enough information about the midwifery OSCE anywhere. Maybe it's because I've not searched, right? That's good. So everything you do in OSCE is also related to midwifery, just like the CBT. Everything is midwifery. The, the only thing that is similar to the nursing is implementation. I think because it's the okay. same vision, but everything is midwifery. Gifty, thank you so much for today. In fact, we are, are more than happy to have you on this channel. And all the accolades and praises and thanks, I receive them in Jesus' name. You deserve, you deserve <laughs> it. And I'm hoping Perfect. this video also comes to help someone, give the person motivation and encourage this person to also push. Have you got any last words for us? Any advice for us, please? okay so i just want to tell everyone who is still trying to get here that they shouldn't give up because giving up is never an option trust me it's going to be very difficult there will be times that you would want to stop the whole process and just be where you are but it's worth it like the struggle is worth it so just keep pushing on and try to find more information about whatever you are doing because during my time there was not much information youtube videos to watch it was more of nurses than midwives so you should just research 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 and then try to you know write a catchy cv or a catchy supporting statement make sure when you get an interview you prepare very well towards and at the right time i'm sure you're also going to get an interview and then hopefully you also get here right also our advice that if you know anyone who has been through the process and understands it it's better to speak with them 
you know try to get in touch with them if they are like yeah you know them on a personal basis see how best they can help you that's how i did it i got a help and that's why i'm out here to also help other people all right gifty thank you so much for coming on our channel thank you for having me we appreciate you coming i'm excited and i wish you the very best I pray that all the good intentions you have at heart that brought you to UK should be fulfilled, all right? Mm -hmm. So that you will be a source of inspiration to someone to also, I mean, follow their dream. All right. So Thank you too for having me and keep up the good work. You are really doing well. I pray people who are in this process chance on your video and are able to benefit from all the good information you're putting out there. All right. So they should share the video. All right. Yeah, they okay, have to. Bye. I'll see you again. Right, bye. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.